everyone, my name is Gabriel Brown, or Black Griffin, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this gigantic 5'2 rocket for about $15 using only the things you see here before. You. Me. I'm also going to teach you how to make the engines that make the flight possible, however I'm going to do that in a separate video as it's kind of an involved process and it could explode, so it shouldn't be attempted by anyone under the age of 50. Let's get started. Okay, the rocket we're going to build will fly up to a thousand feet using the R-Candy engine that I designed for it, which I'll show you how to make in a separate video. Even though the rocket's big, it's actually a pretty simple design. It doesn't even require a parachute because the nose cones are replaceable and the rocket can survive a landing on concrete, probably even a terminal velocity. The things you're going to need to build the rocket should all be available at your local supermarket and are as follows. 15 by 20 inch foam board, pool noodle, aluminum broomstick, milkshake straws, super glue, duct tape or masking tape, 6 by 3 inch styrofoam craft cone, spray paint, and a 1 inch diameter, preferably aluminum tube for holding the engine. I got mine from a broken patio umbrella. The tools you'll need are a ruler or straight edge, a craft razor, a pair of scissors, medium grit sandpaper, a hacksaw, a marker, a few pieces of printer paper, and a 10 inch long piece of string. This will all make sense later. You can also make a decent launch pad using a fiberglass driveway, ref blah, 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 blah. fiberglass driveway reflector and a piece of plywood, at least a foot on each side. All right, got your stuff? That was fast. Let's boogie. First, we're going to cut the fins, or I'm going to cut the fins, you're going to watch. Unless you can multitask, but no, don't do that, you'll cut yourself. Anyway, the foam board is 15 by 20 inches, so first we're going to divide it into three equal pieces by making markings at 6.6 .6 and 13.3 inches along the 20 inch side of the foam board, then scoring vertically. Once the board is divided, make markings at 0.5 inches left to right across the top, 10 inches top to bottom on the right side, 1.5 inches right to left across the bottom, and 5 inches bottom to top on the left side. Blech. That was confusing. Cut across diagonally from the left to right markings, then repeat for all three fins. The aluminum engine tube should be about nine inches long, or however long it takes to fit your engine and broomstick snugly. Make your marking, grab your hacksaw, and begin safely hacking. Oh, and if you can't find an aluminum tube that will hold a one inch PVC pipe or a G-Class model rocket engine, 1.5 inch Schedule 40 PVC should do fine. It's just a bit thicker and heavier, so it's not ideal. Once you've cut and sanded the burrs off your engine housing tube, it's time to attach the broomstick. First unscrew the broom from the stick, then get your tape and begin wrapping it around the top end of the stick until it's thick enough to fit very snugly into the engine tube. This will be the skeleton of your rocket. The spooky, scary skeleton. Once you've finished and are satisfied with the fit and straightness of your skeleton, you can begin the mildly frustrating process of stuffing it inside the pool noodle. You might want to wear gloves for this, as it may require a bit of palm pressure. Ouch. Leave about a half an inch of the engine tube sticking out of the base with two inches of broom handle sticking out of the top. This will hold onto the nose cone, which we're getting to next. Also, it's a good idea at this point to try and balance your rocket vertically to make sure it's perfectly straight, because a rocket with scoliosis ain't gonna fly. Oh, and as a side note, it's probably a good idea to rough up the pool noodle with some sandpaper here so the paint will stick better. Only because it'll be a lot harder to do once the fins are attached and the launch lugs are in place, as I discovered the hard way. The nose cone is pretty straightforward. First, cover it completely in tape to protect it from flaking apart after impact. If done properly, the nose cone should survive several launches. Once covered in tape, line it up so it fits over your pool noodle and apply slight pressure against the broomstick to make a reference divot in the base of the nose cone. Then, use your razor to cut into the tape and push the nose cone onto the broom handle until it fits snugly against the pool noodle. Man, this all sounds really confusing if taken out of context. Now we're going to attach the fins. Since there are three of them, they have to be 120 degrees apart to be evenly spaced, so we're going to have to measure. The standard pool noodle is 10 inches in circumference, so cut a 10 inch piece of string and mark it at 3.3 .3 and 6.6 .6 inches. Told you this would make sense later. Wrap it around the base of your rocket, then transfer the markings on the string to the pool noodle. Draw the third marking where the ends of the string meet. Grab your straight edge and measure 10 inches up from the base of the rocket from all three markings. Make sure they're perfectly straight and in line with the pool noodle. Next, use your razor to score slits half an inch deep along the lines. Try to be perfectly perpendicular to your straight edge, but if you can't do that, maintain your same body position for all three cuts so your scoring angle for each fin is similar. Next, insert your fins. Make adjustments until they're exactly the way you want them, then let them sit for a few minutes. This will widen the slits in the pool noodle and make it easier for you to slide your fins into place once the glue is applied. You can take this time to reflect on your progress. Sit back and marvel at your genius. It's been a long and treacherous road thus far, but it's finally starting to pay off. It's actually starting to look like a rocket now, isn't it? See? That's not so stupid after all. Just wait till you paint it. <laughs> Nobody will have any clue it's a freaking pool noodle. No? That's a hardcore rocket. You're hardcore. Unless they've seen this video, of course, but what are the odds of that? 
Okay, it's been a few minutes, so find a table or something you can sit your rocket on without putting pressure on the fins and begin removing your fins and applying the glue. Coat both sides of the fin and the inside of the groove, then quickly slide the fin into place until it makes contact with the top of the slit. Try not to apply too liberally though, as super glue will melt the foam between the cardstock and make for a flimsy connection. Repeat those steps for all three fins, then it's time to add the launch lugs. Cut a milkshake straw into two lengths, each about two inches long. Place the first one near the top of one of your fins against the fin and rocket body and glue it into place. Let the glue dry a bit, then use your straight edge or the fiberglass pole from your driveway reflector to mark the precise location of the second launch lug. This will ensure it's perfectly in line with the first lug. I like to go about 15 inches up from the top of the fin. Glue the second launch lug into place, then prepare your spray paint station, because as soon as the glue dries, we're gonna give this rocket a NASA-worthy paint job. Ah, yep, look at me, trying to evenly sand the rocket after attaching the fin. See, I told you. Stupid. Now I'm sure this goes without saying, but make sure you paint in a well-ventilated area, away from expensive things or open flames. If you need to ask why, you shouldn't be doing this. I chose black and white spray paint because it gives that classic rocket look and makes it easier to see in flight. It's also the cheapest at 98 cents per can. I chose matte over gloss because it seems to stick to the pool noodle better, but you can use whatever color and texture you want. In fact, I encourage you to. Don't copy me. I'm nobody. Be original. Only you can be you. I'm using printer paper to ensure clean lines, and as an added bonus, it's really satisfying when you take the paper off and see what the rocket looks like. Ah, what a beauty. All right, time to make the engines and give this gargantuan noodle rocket a test flight. Five, three, good luck. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, it's coming down! Here it comes, here it comes! <laughs> and that's my $15 rocket tutorial. We'll call it the Griffin for, I don't know, no reason. Click here for a video on how I made the engine. If I haven't uploaded it yet, then I guess you're gonna have to subscribe. Oh, well, that's made him. Anyway, like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, subscribe for more music and videos, and I will see you guys later. Here's a side note and disclaimer about the engine making video. If you do decide to make one, please be extremely careful. And if you don't have any experience making rocket engines, follow my instructions exactly. Getting this engine design right required a very risky trial and error process. Emphasis on error. Keep in mind a failed rocket engine is a rocket bomb. So yeah, please be careful. And happy flying.